Hello and greetings from Iceland, but today I am taking you on a map of the tour around the Geldingadalur volcano, but the landscape is always changing, and uh, I've got some new height model images, which is a good change from the lava videos, and I'm always working on methods to simplify things in order to bring you closer to the scene. So first I'm going to show you the lava field that now covers around 4.8 square kilometers and flattening out the landscape up there. And then we remove that layer. Then we have the latest height line update, only a few days old, but we can see the lava outlines. And this will therefore be my main overview map for today, where I will travel a bit around the volcano, adding the camera locations and such on the map, and predict how the lava will move, and ask if we are doing enough in order to avoid what we are seeing in La Palma, where sadly there is this huge loss of land and properties in live TV these days, reminding us about what might happen to our town Grindavík, that is very close to the volcano. But let's move on with the map. But let's start with the map, and I'm first going to add the camera locations for those of you who don't know the region all that well, but are using the webcams. Webcam number one is located here, and that is from the state broadcasting service. That's what they call the hot camera. It's usually aimed towards the crater with this view that you know very well, but note that they rotate it a few times a day, like when they get tired of the tourists that are jumping in front of it, and I don't blame them. I would, however, not expect too much view from this camera for the next days. Not only is the weather forecast miserable for the next days, but the volcano has been dormant for the last days as well. But what is a bit odd now is that the thermograph, it didn't drop suddenly, as it tends to do when the volcano takes a break. This time it faded out, so some of our experts were raising questions over if it was a sign of something. But then, the only known pattern from the volcano is that it's constantly changing its pattern, and therefore still leaving more questions than answers. But let's move to camera 2. It's down here, and if I was operating a TV station with a goal to be as boring as possible, this is a fantastic location for a live cam. But I must say though that the operator was thinking ahead because this might be a strong location later on. You can see the lava barrier in the upper left corner, and that is where the last line of defense is today. Or in order to prevent the lava from coming down over the south coast road, or at least to buy us some time. Then we have number three, that is the camera from a newspaper called mpl.is. You can get news from them in English as well, and the camera is located just by the barrier. I like the quality from it, but the location ain't that good. They had another camera up there a few weeks ago, and it was located very close to the crater, but it's gone now, and should you rather say that the land under the camera is gone, under lava. So this camera is not doing a whole lot for me in a moment, but this location can be strong though, when those large lava pumps up there get moving, like happened in last week, but it will show nothing in the next days, I would think. So let's move to the biggest question, looking at uncertain future. I have already covered the path of the lava across the road pretty well so far, and I can't add anything to that except that maybe it's just a good thing that the lava will come flowing down there, after all. Since we are looking at a sealed volcano in the making, the largest volcanic formation that we can find on Earth, and we do already have 20 such formations just on the peninsula, both large and small, but most of them are from the end of the Ice Age, and the youngest sealed volcano in Iceland is the island Surtsey, and that eruption lasted for three and a half years. So if we are very optimistic and say that the Geldingadalir eruption would only take uh, three more years with uh, this map in mind, we could easily see ourselves in a position that it is a blessing in disguise to see the south coast road uh, close and uh, get rid of some of the lava just down to the sea, out of harm's way. And that is uh, simply because all other options are so much, much worse. And the latest uh, lava pond uh, outburst showed us very well that we are very close to losing the lava stream over the barrier that you have up there, 
and uh, into this area here called uh, Nothaga Kriki. Nothaga Kriki. That's an easy one, I think. And uh, from there, we are looking at the worst case scenario in all directions. If the lava would move north, it might end up in a town called Vogar, but I covered that town in a recent video that I'm linking to. When it goes to west, we have a blue lagoon and a power plant, very important part of the infrastructure on the peninsula, and 1,000 jobs. And then, of course, Grindavik, the home of uh, over 3,000 people. It is official that there are some preparations going on in Grindavik, and also by the power plant, where they are planning uh, kilometers of barriers. And uh, let's say that the eruption would uh, go on for three more years. The question remains if the lava volume would uh, be enough to reach those places. And would it matter if you could uh, direct it as much as possible into Nautai, where it is accumulating today? Nautai would for sure not hold that long. We have all seen how much lava it can spew up and uh, how fast it can happen. All we need is maybe one, two weeks of strong activity and uh, off it goes down to the sea. But I am wondering a bit now if there is a master plan that I don't know about. Everything depends on uh, for how long the eruption will uh, last, of course. If it will uh, go on for decades, no matter what we do, it doesn't matter. Everything will go under lava there. And uh, since I have this height model in front of me, I picked up another shield volcano from the same map in the right proportions. And when I place it here, on top of the uh, Keltingadalur uh, volcano, we see this huge chunk of mass, or a sample of uh, what the uh, worst case scenario might look like. But a giant uh, formation uh, like this is very unlikely. And let's say that uh, we would get a medium-sized uh, shield volcano. We are still uh, in huge problems. The town Grindavik and uh, important uh, harbor, one of the very few harbors by the south coast, would be gone. So the longer we can uh, control the flow through Nautai Valley and down to the sea, the more time it buys us. If this is not going to take decades, so this uh, short barrier up there, that is controlling the flow down to Nautai, its uh, importance is uh, growing, as it looks to me. So I have the feeling that there is some important parts uh, of the discussion that we need to have here in Iceland just uh, missing. Or uh, will that barrier hold for much longer? And isn't it worth it to make every effort to make sure that uh, it holds lava back from Nautai Creek for as long as possible? And I'm also a bit worried that if this will move into the uh, bureaucracy machine, we might have a man-made disaster on our hands. Because uh, that machine is uh, a disaster that we created ourselves, as for timing and to keep up to date with what is happening. There might, however, be something in the pipes that uh, I haven't heard about. And to watch the live stream from La Palma, it is showing us uh, so well what... Uh, put away uh, this part of my country, or uh, major property damage. And we have enough with the natural disasters in my country. We don't need uh, man-made disasters on top of them. There is absolutely no discussion going on about this uh, barrier up there and its uh, importance. But uh, let's hope that they have it under control. And finally, I want to remind you about this link to the height model. It's from the Icelandic Land Survey. And the people there, they are for sure doing a great job. This is a fantastic model, where you can see all our volcanic systems, not in 3D, but uh, almost, and it's just so much uh, information there. You can also add a photo layer on top of it, so this will be very useful for me in future, so you can understand the landscape. And uh, I'm not going to make this any longer today. I hope this helped you a bit to understand the land up there. And with that, I'm sending you best regards from a volcanic island, Iceland.